Kosha, welcome to the program. Let's start with the impeachment inquiry vote. Um, Democrats are saying that this is just, you know, a big Republican smear campaign. I reckon there's a fair bit more when you look at some of these money transfers. What do you think and what do you think the politics of this looks like for 2024? Great to be with you, James. Uh, there is quite a bit more here. That's not to say that politics isn't one driving factor in this, because whether we like it or not, that's the world we live in right now, and politics and the j justice system uh, and Congress and everything else is at a, a stark intersection, and there's no denying that. But there is legitimacy to it, because basically, you know, if I were to boil it down, what it comes down to is, is there some proof of impropriety or corruption being uh, that has taken place both when Biden was vice president as well as, you know, right now while he's a sitting president. And the other side is saying, well, there isn't direct proof. There aren't, like, direct transfers of money from Hunter Biden's bank account into Joe Biden's bank account. Unless you have that, you can't bring these charges. But actually, there is a, a criminal statute over um, in, in the U.S. Code saying that you don't need to show a direct transfer of money. You just have to show that there was influence. This is the quid pro quo uh, clause, excuse me, that there's got to be influence there and there's a quid pro quo benefit that was received by actors that otherwise would not have received it. And there's ample evidence of that. There's two or three examples um, for those paying attention that really pop. And, um, you know, that's what this is, this is about. Opening and formalizing this inquiry gives them subpoena power. As you mentioned, you know, the first uh, witness they wanted to subpoena was Hunter Biden, and uh, that did not go the way, I guess, traditionally one would have expected it to. Yeah, and when you talk about the, the money trail and so on, I mean, we know that Joe Biden, when he was Obama's vice president, met with a large number of Hunter's clients who presumably, you know, that's what they were trying to buy was the access. And it seems to me that when you've got that, plus all of the suspicious transaction reports that have been filed around the Biden family bank accounts, you know, anybody else, this would seem like an open and shut RICO case. It would. And, you know, only a dummy would ever, like, get on the phone and directly have video evidence saying transferring this money and show that. Like, nobody does that. And bribery has been around since the beginning of bribery. People always use a third party or shell companies or things like that. The three, I, I think, most um, important examples that pop is the Burisma board, where infamously Hunter was getting $80,000 a month to sit on that board. And there is evidence that it actually affected U.S. public policy and that uh, the, the Biden, as vice president in his portfolio, defied what the standing policy of the U.S. government was in getting that prosecutor fired who was investigating Burisma. There's the other example of uh, Yelena Batarina, the first former first lady of Moscow, who wired three and a half million dollars to Hunter Biden. And then later on, when Russia went forward and invaded Ukraine and, and the U.S. issued this whole list of sanctions against all sorts of Russian oligarchs, she was conveniently exempted from that. And then there's a third one where the Bank of China um, re has received preferential treatment in terms of U.S. regulatory standards that every other company in the world must abide by if they want to list on the NASDAQ or the um, U.S. stock exchanges. And they have an exemption from that. And we know that there's money trails of uh, Chinese private equity funds giving money into the, the Biden enterprises. So things like that, as it comes out in this probe and the American people get a broad understanding of that. They're not going to be in the weeds, perhaps, as much as you and I are. Uh, mm. I don't think it's playing well, certainly with independents or people that aren't wedded to, to the Bidens. Kosha Goddard, we're going to have to leave it there, but this is not the end of this story. Thank you so much for your time.